Chabad leaders, synagogue leaders worldwide are warning Jewish communities about the possibility of more anti-Semitic terrorist attacks, such as the one that happened in the San Diego area last week. This past Saturday, exactly six months after gunfire rang out at a synagogue in Pittsburgh that claimed 11 lives, a 19-year-old was arrested for opening fire inside that California house of worship. One person died, three others were hurt. He was an avowed white supremacist. With white supremacy and anti-Semitism on the ride, Chabad leaders are hearing calls from their congregants to increase security. Joining me here on The Morning Show is my friend Rabbi Shmuley Novak, the spiritual leader of the Chabad on the South Side. So when you talk to members of your congregation, what are they telling you? Well, folks are definitely saddened. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, sadness as despair, but folks are inspired. Folks are not going to be um, brought down by this attack. In fact, there's a rallying call around the world to say, you know what, this is not going to stop us. We're not going to stay away from synagogue because of this. We're going to go to synagogue. We're going to participate. But of course, there's a, there's a tremendous concern, and we have to review our security protocols whenever a terrible event like this happens. The U.S. is supposed to be a place where we are free to worship. Is there a frustration that terror is finding its weapon? And I mean that in a metaphorical way. Um, it's, this is definitely not what we're used to in the United States of America. Um, th this country is a real blessing. It's a blessing to the Jewish people. We have the rights and the freedoms to celebrate our faith as we wish. But over the past decade or so, there's been this uptick of attacks, and it's something that we have to keep our, our eyes on. It's something which is greatly disturbing. Uh, but I think the message, I think the, what's amazing about this story is being defined not by the attacker, but by the response to the attack. It's being defined by a community coming together to remember Lori Kay, who was murdered, to support her daughter Hannah and her husband. It's been, it's been defined by the two um, gentlemen in the congregation, an army veteran and an off-duty border patrolman who chased the attacker and pursued him. It's defined by a rabbi who, despite his hands being almost blown off, and fingers dangling, he, stuck, he, stuck, he, stood, he stuck, stuck around, he stood there, and he inspired his community. He brought the children to safety and had to be dragged off by the paramedics. And it's defined really by the Jewish community around the world saying, this is not going to slow us down. This is not going to stop us. In fact, this is a rallying call. This is inspiring Jewish people, some who haven't gone to synagogue for many, many years, saying, you know, this Shabbat, we're going to go to services. And, and in fact, there is a movement right now. It's called Hashtag Share Shabbat, which you are encouraging people to come to synagogue. Absolutely. And you can come as well, Bruce. Shabbos is here. Shabbos is a time for Jewish people to find comfort, to find peace. And it's the glue of our community. So I encourage everyone, go to your shul, go to your synagogue, or go to your Chabad house. You can visit us near the St. John's Town Center at the Finker Frankel Chabad Center. But this is our way to, to show the world that we're not going to be brought down. We're not going to be intimidated. We are going to keep our heads up, held up high, and we're not going to be intimidated by these evil, senseless attacks. And, and this lack of intimidation, it's not just a message for the Jewish community. It's for the Christian community, the Hindu community, the Muslim community. Um, you and I were talking. There is, in general, among too many people, a lack of respect for life. And I don't want to get into the whole debate about the idea of prayer in public schools, but there is an effort now to bring a moment of silence in our schools where our kids can reflect on the meaning of life. Yes, and the inherent value of human life, um, man being created in the image of God, and uh, that this provides each and every individual with innate value. And I think it's important that we encourage our public schools. I believe in 36 states it's already either allowed or mandated where students can take a minute and close their eyes or keep them open and reflect on the value of life and the fact that there's a higher purpose, there's a mission, and there's something to aspire to, and, there's a, and we have to respect ourselves and respect one another. And to those who pose a threat, what is the single strongest message that we can send to them? Well, I think the, the reaction of the Jewish community, and in fact, the entire, uh, the, the world, is that this is actually not bringing us down. This is not intimidating us. This is inspiring people, and this is seen as a rallying call by communities around the world to say, you know what, we're going to go to shul, we're going to fill the pews, we're going to hashtag share Shabbat, and we're going to take strength from this, and we're going to find encouragement and inspiration from those acts of heroism um, from all these folks involved in this terrible situation. So the message is that terror will not win. Rabbi, thanks for being here.